Good morning, my little artists. So today we're gonna to be working on a landscape, a cityscape in particular, so we're gonna be drawing lots of different buildings. This is an unpainted example of where we're heading. We're gonna be making some three-dimensional forms and buildings for our cityscape. So first we're gonna learn how shapes and forms are different. A shape is two-dimensional and flat. This is your regular squares and circles and triangles and trapezoids. For it to be a form, a form is 3D, meaning it has height, width, and depth, and you can see your way around it. For our forms, we're gonna be drawing the front, the top, and the sides of your building. Two of the most common forms that you'll be using are some form of a cube or a rectangle and a cylinder. We're gonna do a little bit of practicing before we actually get to our real paper. That way we know we've got the steps right. So we're gonna start off just by drawing a simple cube, only showing the front and the sides. So go ahead and start with a little square, and then think of the top like windshield wipers. In your brain, you're gonna wanna draw them straight, but they need to be diagonal. They need to be on a slant. So I'm gonna make one slanted line here and another slanted line here. You want them to go at the same angle, the same direction. Then you close the space and bring it on down. That's a pretty simple cube. And so by now you should be an expert at overlapping. So we're going to add a cylinder that looks like it's behind this square. And the easiest way to draw a cylinder is to start with two dots. Those two dots tell you how wide your cylinder's gonna be. Then you're gonna connect them with a gentle smile and then with a gentle rainbow from the dots, you're gonna go straight down. Now remember, because it's behind this, you don't wanna cross through it. Just stop where the next line meets. The sides always come out from the dot and it ends in a curved line. This curved line is what tricks our brain into believing that this is a round three-dimensional object instead of a flat rectangle. Here's the difference. One looks way more three-dimensional than the other. With this flat bottom, our brain isn't reading this as a cylinder. With this curved bottom, our brain goes, oh, hey, that's a cylinder. That's a three-dimensional form. So now let's get started on our real paper. In pencil, very lightly, we're gonna start at the bottom with a horizon line. We know that this is the line where the sky touches the ground, and you go straight across the paper. Next, you're gonna wanna think about the different types of lines and shapes that you want for the front of your building. These are called dancing skyscrapers, so I like to make them a little funky. I call this the bacon building. So I started with the front of the building, so now I'm gonna use those two diagonal lines to make it look three-dimensional. I'm gonna go to the left and then close the top now, because my building is all the way to the left, you're not really gonna see the side and that's okay. But as long as you're getting good practice doing the top the right way, you should be all right. My next building is gonna be just a regular three-dimensional rectangle. So I'm gonna start with the front. And a little bit's gonna be hiding behind this bacon building. So I'm gonna make my diagonal lines close the top, and then maybe I just see this piece of the building so we know that this is the side. Work your way all the way across the paper to make your cityscape. You can add as many details as you want, but beware of too many windows. Now this one's a little tricky, watch this. This type of building would be considered a four because you're able to show the tops and the sides of multiple layers. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a couple of cylinders back here.
So now I've got the buildings laid out for my cityscape and notice that they're all three dimensional forms. We see the front, the top, and the side. Front, top, side. Get as creative as you want making the details and making the designs of the buildings. Don't forget doors, but like I said, beware of windows. I say four to six windows is plenty. Don't forget to tell us the weather in your picture. Is it daytime, nighttime, sunset? I like nighttime, so I'm going with the moon. Now finish your details. So now that I'm done adding most of the details, whoops, forgot one. To my cityscape, I'm going to go ahead and trace everything in Sharpie for a clean, clear, crisp look. So now that we've got everything sharpied, we're ready to paint. We're going to be using a special type of paint for this project. It's called fluorescent paint. All of the colors are neon. So remember that when we're painting, we're going to take extra good care of Mr. Brush. We're going to wipe him gently. Now this paint is liquid already, so we want to make sure that our brush is pretty dry. Just wipe him off on the edge of the cup. Now because this is liquid paint and not the solid paint that we normally use, we're going to just dip gently, not scoop or swirl. We just have to dip. So I like to start with the big spaces first, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of my sky first. Remember that I like to outline things first, I just think it gives me a good stopping point in case I do go a little bit too far while I'm filling in the big spaces. You always want to try to paint in the same direction just so that you don't see as many streaky lines. So now that I've got my sky done, I can go ahead and paint everything else. You can paint it whatever colors you'd like. Um, just one of the big things that we want to be careful of, the reason we were not making too many windows is because it gets a little tiring to paint those all. So you want to make sure that you're still painting at a level three, nice, neat, quality work without getting too sloppy or feeling too rushed because you drew too many teeny tiny windows. So mine's not quite done yet, but you get the idea. You've got to paint every window by itself. You've got to paint the sides and the tops and the fronts of all of your buildings. This will give you a completed 3D cityscape using forms showing the front, the top, and the side. 